reason why we chose the year 1886 is because of everything that happened before, but also what was going to happen after. Life changed from the Industrial Revolution in 1848 all the way through, really, to the First World War. The Victorian era, the city itself, the booming Industrial Revolution, you're kind of on the cusp of um, the modern era. At the same time, you sort of have this like lingering sense of mysticism. We definitely drew from a lot of that stuff. I remember being enamored with the, the whole idea of, of Camelot and the Knights of the Round Table. Something that was not religious, but really, you know, about humanity. If you look at the Arthurian legend, I mean, there's some of them that go back to pre-Roman, Celtic, and we, we wanted to get that kind of Celtic lineage back into the oldest part of the order. It's so rich with the lore, with those interaction and people, these noble knights basically protecting humanity. And, and it was like, well, if we could meld a story like that, if we build those people, if we build something that is slightly outside the bounds of reality, can we make it real enough? We want that kind of double take where it feels like the 1886 that was, but then kind of out of the corner of your eye, it's like, well, there's certain things where we deliberately kind of deviate from history just to have that balance between getting that first read of believability and sort of the second read of, wow, that's kind of cool and different. We tried to echo a lot of things that were that were true of the time. We didn't want to recreate history, we wanted to twist it. We just poured over kind of the history of the era, maps, the layout of London. Understanding the city, understanding really how it was laid out. We went to London with 20 people, location scouting and shooting extensive amounts of, of photos. If you hadn't been there, you have, to, you have to go there to understand what life is like, what it feels like to walk in the streets, because a lot of it still exists. There's so much history. You can kind of see the layers of time and the layers of architecture built on top of each other, even at that time. We poured over period costumes and did photo shoots, not only capturing all the intricate details of the costumes, but also how people moved in them. A lot of European militaries at that time, they had these just a lot of craftsmanship, a lot of symbols and patches, and a lot of embroidery. The cording, the armored gorgettes and bracers, like those are things we really spent a lot of time kind of pouring over reference, but then kind of inject all of our of lore to kind of craft these specifically for these characters and, and for this order. When we started actually, you know, melding this uh, fiction and nonfiction, there was the need to make sure that we had some uh, control over it. We early on had a lot of elements that were kind of more fantastic. It was very tempting and very easy early on to go like, if we're gonna do alternate history, let's alter the world a lot. The risk of approaching a game like this and, and bringing that balance between fiction and, and nonfiction, once you've basically you know, broken that suspicion of disbelief, there is no, you know, buying it back from the player. That kind of undermined the reality and the believability of the situations and the characters, and then it was kind of like, all bets are off. We didn't want everything to be kind of pushed into alternate history. So more often than not, modes of transportation are the same, like horse-drawn carriages. But then there's technologies like airships that it did exist in that era, but we kind of pushed them ahead in the time frame. We brought in things that were potentially, you know, two, three decades ahead of its time brought them back into the 1886 era. We were able to keep the overall kind of skyline of London, but then you see certain things like the mooring towers with the airships and the searchlights with them that give, it, give you this kind of layered, kind of alternate twist to the feeling of the world. And that's really the, the, the doctrine we follow throughout the game. It's, it's asking the question of whether or not people today that live today could believe the fiction that we're adding into, the, into our history. That's something that sort of ties everything together to, to make it feel like an era that existed kind of out of place in time. What's so fascinating about history is that uh, regardless of all the fiction we write, I don't think it's ever as mysterious as history has been. You can go back and, and read books about events that happen, have happened in the past, and they're really never 100% true. There's always something that actually is slightly off. Uh, that gave us so much ammunition basically to build this IP and, and building a narrative and making this game feel like you're actually living through it. We wanted people to understand how it was to live in that world and to experience the differences in our history firsthand through the eyes of somebody who has seen that history as well. PlayStation.